Tonight on First at Nine, this Monday, the 9th of September 2024. Fair and Square. Legal action will be taken against anyone who undermines the free and fair nature of the presidential election, warns the Election Commission. Brave and Bold. Presidential candidates convey their convictions to the public ahead of the election. Conspiracy. A scam behind passport queues, reveals Minister of Public Security. Previous cabinets responsible for granting the contract for passports to the same supplier for two decades. Make ends meet. Sri Lanka's foreign remittances in August 2024 increased up to 577.5 million US dollars, marking an improvement compared to the previous month. Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsurain, then Lagamati Pharmacy in Labadi the Hacker. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Sri Lanka's premier primetime English news bulletin, Other Derana First at Nine. I'm Tarindu Mahendra, joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and from around the world. In your top story this evening, Minister of Public Security, Tehran Ala stated that the Department of Immigration and Emigration halted online passport appointment scheduling due to a scam involving the sale of appointments for money. During a media briefing today, the minister further noted that the previous cabinet of ministers should be held accountable for awarding passport contracts for the same company for over two decades without conducting global tenders. This time when the stock of passports was nearing its end, a reorder was made from the same company as before. However, I cancelled it and instructed the calling of a global tender. We decided to call for tenders for an e-passport because that is the globally recognized method. We plan to have the new set of passports ready by the time our old stock ran out. However, we faced delays due to an appeal process. Despite this, we looked for ways to bring in passports and manage the rush. We had two choices to make. If you order 500,000 passports at $5.86 each, that stock would be still there when the newly ordered ones arrived. Only a fraction of those 500,000 passports would be used, but we would end up spending 894 million rupees. Alternatively, we could request a batch from the newly ordered e-passports without the electronic chip. I do not think anyone would approve spending 894 million rupees of public funds in this manner. We had to choose to manage the crowd with the existing stock stocks for two months by issuing passports on an urgent basis. We utilize the remaining passports in stock and manage accordingly. With the addition, we saw queues forming. However, these queues were not solely due to the passport issue. We started this process with online appointments, but within 15 to 20 minutes of the portal opening, all appointments were booked. Upon investigation, we discovered that a group of people were using multiple SIM cards to make bookings and selling these appointments to innocent people for 45,000 rupees each. To counter this, we stopped the online appointment system and decided to issue passports on a first-come, first-served basis. In response, people began selling their spots in the queues for about 25,000 rupees. I then called in the police, explained the situation and handed over the crowd control to them. Now we are able to clear the queues within a few hours. Minister, how many passports are you expecting uh, without the chips? It depends. They have agreed to give up to 350. They have said minimum 300, maximum 750. Now, you talk about this, uh, uh, the, the reordering of uh, the previous passport. So, who should be accountable for From uh, 2003, the order has been there, proper tender. Since then, 2007, 13, 15, 18, 20, 22, like that, it has been going on. This has been going on through cabinet approvals, uh, right through. You also said that, that the cabinet itself, there are papers saying that we should yeah. not go for this, the last order. The cabinet itself has revoked its own decision. That is what has been happening. Horizon Campus 2024 Intake 2. Register now. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. How do we are Mitra Lassan to Venus Kelly? Venus Manusik. Dilith Venus Manusik. Ratak Venus Karanata Tarwin. 
The Election Commission emphasized that it will take legal action against any person who compromises the free and fair nature of the presidential election, regardless of their standing or political affiliation. The election regulatory body issued this statement in response to a number of violations of election law that were observed during the past few days. The Commission also convened a meeting with presidential candidates as well as election observers to hold discussions in this regard. A meeting was convened at the offices of the Election Commission in Rajagiriya earlier this morning between the Election Commission, the presidential candidates and their representatives. Mehdi Visheshem Yedam Panata Pilibandava Avadani Mukala, Pakshawalata, Tamangini Hutin, Patkirim Tula at Vilitin Viakulata and Pilibandova Padil Kirim Kan Labua. According to the information that is provided by the intelligence units, they informed me on Saturday that there's a threat to Namal Rajpaksha's life. I was informed that SLPP leader, former President Mahindra Rajpaksha's life, is also under threat. I inquired about this subject today from the election commission. Meanwhile, following two instances of violation of election law related to the promotion of candidates that were observed yesterday, the Election Commission commented on the correct methodology by which promotion of candidates should be conducted. Another meeting was held this evening between the Election Commission and election observers. Paparal, as election observers, clearly described how our observations are done and we informed them about our monitoring methods. We are planning to deploy around 5,000 election observers on election day to monitor the voting process. Meanwhile, a video clip containing threatening remarks supposedly made by a group claiming to be supporters of the National People's Power has been circulating on social media platforms. Violations of election law are still taking place. The law does not permit organizing extended marches for the purpose of distributing handbills. Only groups consisting of five or fewer individuals are permitted to engage in the distribution of handbills. If marches are being organized for this purpose, the police will take steps to prevent them. A complaint was filed in this regard before the Criminal Investigation Department today by councillors representing the Samagijana Balavege. If any person acts in such a manner that compromises the free and fair nature of the election, the Election Commission has the complete authority to take legal actions against such individuals regardless of their standing or political affiliations. Therefore, we request that everyone refrain from violating election law and lend their support in conducting a free and fair election. In the meantime, the acceptance of nominations for the Alpitya Pradesh Sabha for the local government election commenced today. Acceptance of nominations for the LPTA Pradesh Sabha election will conclude at 12 noon on the 12th of September and the deadline for placing deposits will end at 12 noon on the 11th. Political parties or independent groups in intending to contest the election can hand over nominations and place deposits at the Gold District Secretariat. Additionally, the Election Commission announced that postal voters who were unable to cast their votes on each either the 4th, 5th or 6th of September can do so on Wednesday the 11th of September or Thursday the 12th of September. Such voters can cast their votes at the district election office of the district in which their workplace is located. Presidential candidate and leader of the Samagijana Balavege led alliance, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa vowed that he will not draw a salary as president if elected to office in the upcoming election, but will completely dedicate himself to Sri Lanka's development. Addressing a gathering in Valley Mada, Premadasa revealed that an SJB led government plans on establishing special presidential task forces to oversee the development of each district. An election rally pledging support to the leader and presidential candidate of the Samagijana Balavege led alliance, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, was held yesterday in Valimada. 
The National People's Power claims that almost every Sri Lankan has become a supporter of the NPP. If that is the case, who are these people? Are they from abroad? Recently, the focus of conversations has changed from the NPP to Sajid Premadasa. Within the next 10 days, Sajid Premadasa's name will echo across the entire country. I would like to offer suggestions to potato farmers. Are you ready to meet the country's demand? We will certainly provide seedlings at a concessional price. Currently, the price of 50 kilograms of seedling is 37,500 rupees. The president does not fully understand the needs of the public and farmers. The president often speaks about the sacrifices required to ensure the well-being of citizens. I want to assure you that I will make the greatest sacrifice for this country after I am elected to office on the 21st of September. I will not be a president who merely works for a salary or incentives. I will dedicate myself to the development of our nation without drawing a salary. The first step I will take for the development of the Batula district to appoint a district development president special task force. Leader and presidential candidate of the National People's Power, Anura Kumara Disanayake extended an invitation to President Ranil Vikramasinghe to join him in an open debate. Addressing a gathering in Anamadua, Disanayake also asserted that the president has entered into a secretive political deal with opposition leader Sajit Premadasa and the Samagijana Balavege. The Artists' Conference of the National People's Power was held last night in Colombo under the patronage of NPP leader and presidential candidate Anura Kumar Disanayake. <laughs> Bahan may at a gamakata gila, Oba Paule I some of the Chitra Patiya Balanagi Kavada the Cinema Sala Kil. The majority of those living in rural areas would say they haven't taken their family to the cinemas lately. Right now society seems dull and boring. A few years ago a cinema in Tambutegama was closed so that a warehouse could be built on the property. Another theatre in Matara was similarly shut down to make space for a supermarket. Another cinema in Anradapuri is currently a tuition based institution. Similarly, a lot of movie theatres are currently closed. Some people claim that they eliminated fuel and gas queues. On the other hand, we are counting down the days until we see people waiting in long queues in front of cinemas. We are enthusiastically waiting to see people waiting in long queues in front of theatres and bookshops to watch dramas and purchase novels. Under our government, we will make sure that this becomes a reality. However, we cannot do miracles after assuming power. However, the NPP is committed to ensuring that the public will once again visit cinemas to watch movies. As as such, all required measures will be in place to make this a reality. Meanwhile, a rally in support to the leader and presidential candidate of the National People's Power, Anura Kumar Nayaka, was held in Anamadu this morning. Ranil Vikram Singh is currently attempting to befriend me. However, we will not fall for this. During some of his election rallies, he requested me to provide answers to the questions he raised. However, instead of answering his questions at election rallies, I invite him for a debate so that we can hold an open discussion concerning the country's issues. During this debate, each of us will have the opportunity to question one another and provide answers. It is pointless to answer his concerns at my election rally. Thereby, a debate would be convenient for both parties. Even the SJB members claim that they have entered into a deal with Ranil Vikramasinghe. Yes, I can list out the deals they have made. What happened to the probe into Sajid Premadasa's misappropriation of funds in the Central Cultural Fund? What happened to that investigation? This came to a halt as a result of the deal they made with the government. Those are the deals that they have entered into. <laughs> Anna deal 
Meanwhile, President Ranil Vikramasinghe questioned the National People's Power's budget and requested the leader and presidential candidate Anurukumara Disanayake to explain the figures mentioned in the budget proposal of the NPP's manifesto. Addressing a rally in Gampola today, President Vikramasinghe highlighted that if the NPP's budget proposal is implemented, Sri Lanka will face a 4 trillion rupee budget deficit. An election campaign rally under the theme Puluan Sri Lanka, pledging support to President Ranil Vikramasinghe ahead of the presidential election, was held this afternoon in Gampola. <laughs> Facebook again the Kalpanaka Latanda than the bear, TikTok again Kalpanaka Latanda than the bear, Ape Udata to it in a TikTok again of Kalpanaka Labano Naka than the noon again. Metamai, Mama Gampola Daka Vishal Masenega. I came forward when both Sajit and Anura abandoned you. Now they are calling me Rani Rajapaksha. If I were defending the Rajapakshas, they would be on this stage with me. I came forward to safeguard the people of this country. If the budget proposal by the NPP is implemented, the rupee will start at 400 to 425 against the US dollar and could depreciate to 500 rupees. Let me explain why. Next year, our expense will be 6.8 billion US dollars, while our income is estimated to be 5.1 billion US dollars, leaving us in a deficit. I plan to purchase foreign exchange from the market. If we make 5% from the market, our budget will be balanced. However, I looked at the budget proposal by the NPP and they would require 8.9 trillion rupees. After all the tax reductions, their income would only be 4.9 trillion rupees, resulting in a deficit of 4 trillion rupees. Now where are they going to find that money? If we start printing money, we will lose all international support. Therefore, under their budget, the rupee will start at 400 to 425 against the US dollar and after printing money, and by the time the next IMF tranche comes, it will be 500 rupees against the US dollar. I asked the NPP leader, the former agriculture minister, to clarify what this budget is. Why are you putting pressure on the public again? If I am wrong, then come forward and present the correct figures. <laughs> A short break now and we will be back with the latest in the election front. Start dishwash belly till idul pass when say they start dishwash magic tapika. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. Chandul Sube Kagin Manape Singa TV Singa TV Sapa Supiri Deal. Welcome back. Now, presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, Naman Rajapaksa, asserted that leaders should not aim to secure power solely on the promise of correcting the wrongdoings of previous administrations. Addressing an SLPP electorate meeting in Martale today, Naman Rajapaksa asserted that he, as a representative of the youth, is committed to safeguarding the future of Sri Lanka's younger generation if elected to the office of president. An electorate meeting of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna pledging support to the party's presidential candidate Namal Rajapaksha was held today in Matale. There is a plot to put former President Mahinda Rajapaksa's life in danger orchestrated by Anurakumar Disa Nayaka, which involves removing his official residence and protection. We request that this conspiracy be uncovered. Since my father developed the expressway, we were able to travel from Panadura to Matale. Many leaders weave development from the wrong perspective. Most presidential candidates Candidates seek power with the goal of bringing those who misappropriate state assets to justice. During the government of good governance, efforts were made to bring those who misappropriate state assets to justice by forming a committee for this purpose. However, we were acquitted from all those allegations. The incumbent president, who was the prime minister during the government of good governance, confirmed that the Rajapaksha family had not earned through any illicit means, and as a result, we were acquitted. We must continue working, and I am committed to taking on that responsibility. I understand what the youth needs and how to secure the future of the younger generation. Meanwhile, another rally of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna was held in Badulla yesterday under the patronage of the party's presidential candidate Namal Rajapaksha. 
We should speak the truth. We should be open about what we can and cannot do. I believe we represent the political movement of the younger generation. What I request is that you give the younger generation the freedom to develop this country. Yes, we are innocent, as are our supporters. However, that innocence should not be exploited as subservience. I take responsibility of protecting our supporters, our party and our nation. Meanwhile, presidential candidate of the Salva Janabalaya, Dilit Jayavira, asserts that the people have the opportunity to join a leader who is honest with the nation and who does not rely on politics to further their own interests by voting for him in the upcoming presidential election. Jayavira also affirmed his commitment to protecting Sri Lanka's war veterans from international prosecution or through the Truth, Unity and Reconciliation Commission. Another public rally pledging support to the presidential candidate of the Sarvajana Balaya, Dilit Jayavira, was held today in Ayagama. The interventions of foreign powers and non-governmental organizations is currently diminishing the expectations of the youth. On page 230 of the NPP's manifesto, they have stated their willingness to take war veterans before international courts. They have also expressed that they will expand the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Not even President Ranil Vikramasinghe has said that. They have even suggested amending Ranil Vikramasinghe's constitution. Sociologically speaking, it is true that 3% of any society will despise their culture and heritage. This is the truth. However, they should not put their beliefs on other members of this society. Meanwhile, another election rally in support of the Sarvajana Balaya's presidential candidate, Dilit Jayavira, was held today in Ahalya Goda. The people of our nation have the chance to become part of the group of 10 leaders who are honest with both their constitution and the nation and who do not rely on politics to further their own interest. Several agricultural institutions were gazetted by former president Chandrika Kumarathunga under the Minister of Agriculture at the time, Andra Kumarathisanayaka. However, presently he is claiming that all leaders who assume power have led to the country's downfall. All these people live a life of luxury while pretending to be considerate of the public concern. I adamantly maintain that there are no differences at all between between any of these politicians. Then Rupia, this year's sort of signal gram makes you a tuck. Lanka with vast in a minute in a pack. And in business news, Sri Lanka's foreign remittances from migrant workers deposited in August this year amounted to 577.5 million US dollars, marking an improvement compared to the 567 million US dollar figure recorded in July. The central bank reported that workers' remittances recorded in August 2024 show an increase of 425 million US dollars compared to the same period last year. In 2023, workers' remittances amounted to 3.86 billion US dollars from January to August. In comparison, foreign remittances recorded from January to August 2024 stands at 4.28 billion US dollars. Accordingly, the cumulative influx of foreign remittances from January to August this year reflects a year-on-year -year growth of 11%. Meanwhile, Sri Lankan Airlines and Fly Dubai announced an interline agreement commencing today that will introduce more travel opportunities between Sri Lanka, the United Arab Emirates and beyond on select routes on the carrier's networks. The agreement will enable passengers travelling with Sri Lankan Airlines to seamlessly connect via the Dubai International Airport to more than 30 destinations that Fly Dubai operates to in Africa, Central Asia, Central and Southeast Europe as well as the Middle East. This includes unique holiday destinations such as Bucharest, Istanbul, Krakow, Mombasa, Naples, Sofia, Tashknet and Zanzibar. In addition, the interline will offer fly Fly Dubai passengers 
access to 16 destinations on the Sri Lankan Airlines network spanning South and East Asia, the Middle East and Australia, including Melbourne, Seoul, Singapore and Tokyo. Welcome back. The Colombo Bourse closed in red today as a result of price losses in counters such as Commercial Bank, Hatton National Bank and Ceylon Tobacco Company with the turnover crossing 1.2 billion rupees. The benchmark All Share Index settled 1.05% lower at 10,663.10 points. The S&P Sri Lanka 20 also fell by 1.77% to close at 2,960.21 points. Trading volume on the index rose to 32.8 million shares from 22.6 million in the previous session. The food, beverage and tobacco sector was the top contributor to the market turnover, while the banking sector came in second. Foreign investors were net buyers purchasing stocks worth 65.2 million rupees, while domestic investors were net sellers offloading shares worth 1.2 billion rupees. Senior analyst of Capital Alliance, Sahajit Nazar, joins us now with a few thoughts to round off our Markets in View segment for the week. Last week, the domestic equity market had a minor decline, with the S&P 20 declining by 1.47% to close at 3,013 from 3,058, and the all-share price index declined by 0.86% from 10,869 to close at 10,775. Despite these reductions, market turnover increased dramatically by 44% to 5.2 billion rupees. With this presidential election date set for the upcoming week, the market sentiment is still unclear going into this week. The government generated 152 billion rupees last week through treasury note auctions. Interest rates increased slightly throughout the auction by 12, 10 and 2 basis points for 3, 6 and 12 month bills respectively. With that, let's take a look at the rupee exchange rate for the day. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining and have a good night.